It is just the process by which living organism, it is the process by which living organism takes in food substances in order for them to have energy. The process by which living organism take in food substances in order to have energy is referred to as nutrition. But today's class will be based on nutrition in animals, how animals take in their own food. Now talking about animal, don't forget you and me fall under this category. So we we'll progress as from now henceforth. Now, animals generally cannot manufacture their food. So they are called heterotrophs. I believe you know, we also have autotrophs. Autotrophs are organisms that can manufacture their own food. Example are plants. Example are bacteria. Chemosynthetic non-green plants and chemosynthetic non-green plants also. These are examples of autotrophic organisms. So, but today, today's class will be based on heterotrophs, that is organisms that depend on other living organisms for food. Now, what are the classes of food substances? The food eaten by animals, as I've said before, human beings are classified as higher animals. They are classified as what? Higher animals. Now, we have seven classes of food. We have carbohydrates, protein, fat and oil, mineral salt, vitamin, water, and roughages. Compared to our days in, in primary school, where we are taught that we only have six classes of food. But here, we have seven classes of food. Now, let's start with the first one, carbohydrate. Now, example of carbohydrate, <laughs> uh, rice, yam, bread, these are carbohydrate food. And carbohydrates are of three types. We have the monosaccharide, the disaccharide, and the polysaccharide. Monosaccharide are carbohydrates with one simple sugar. Disaccharide, carbohydrates with two simple sugar. Why polysaccharide are carbohydrates with so many simple sugar? Now, what are the importance of carbohydrates? It gives animal energy. The food that give animal energy are carbohydrates. They also provide heat, provides heat needed to maintain body temperature. And it can also be used for lubrication in the mucus in our body system. Now, mucus just is in our stomach, which allows lubrication of food in order for the food to pass through our anus. That is the, that is the waste, our uh, waste food, the undigested food to pass through our anus. Now, part of the importance of carbohydrates is to ensure lubrication in our body system. It provides heat to maintain the body temperature and also gives animals energy. These are the main importance of carbohydrates. Now let's talk about protein. Protein are complex molecules made up of smaller units called amino acids. They are made up of smaller units called amino acids. So the end product of protein is amino acid. But the end product of carbohydrates is glucose. Now what are the importance of protein? That they are used to repair one of tissues. They are used in the production of enzymes. The main importance of protein, of protein is to repair those tissues in our body system that are not in good order. Those tissues that are in one way or the other trying to collapse. With the help of protein, it will help to amend those tissue and make the tissue to be okay. So these are the importance of protein. Now, fat and oil, as the name implies, fat and oil. So 
anything dealing with oil falls under this category. Foods like palm oil, garnet oil, soya beans, all of this kind of food falls under fat and oil. Why the smaller units for protein, for fat and oil are lipids. They are lipids. Now, what are the importance of fat and oil? It gives you energy, even more than carbohydrates. Yes, fat and oil gives more energy than carbohydrates compared to other food substances. Gain food, but yet it can give energy like fat and oil. It cannot give energy like fat and oil. So carbohydrate, so fat and oil gives more energy than carbohydrate. It supplies essential fatty acids to the body. It supplies essential fatty acids to the body. Now we're talking about mineral salts. Mineral salts. Are those minerals that are that is needed, for, needed in our body system? Example is calcium. Like calcium, you know, calcium helps in the in bones. Something we call ossification. This is the process by which bone is being formed. So calcium helps in this process. So all of calcium, magnesium, potassium, all of these are minerals. They are needed in our body system. So what are the influence of, of these mineral salts? The one, they regulate the body temperature. They regulate body, body metabolism. And the metabolic reaction that occurs in our body it is these minerals that aids that aids the its regulation. Another importance is the components of bones and teeth. That is, most of all our bones, you have fine teeth, your feet is shining. You have strong bones. You can jump from up, you can jump, you can fly, you can run, you can do anything you like. It's all because of the fact that we have these minerals. These minerals are made up of the bones in our body system. That's why we have to take in food that contains these minerals in order for the bones to retain its capacity. Another importance of mineral salts is to aid blood formation. Yes, it aids blood formation. So it aids the formation of blood. You see some people, they'll be living life, they don't have much blood in their body system. Now, one of the mineral that is that works in the formation of blood is iron. As I realize that most blood drugs or blood syrups, they contain iron. You see there, ferrous, 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 ferrous. So these minerals are needed in our body system. So immunity salt is blood formation. Now the next one is vitamins. Vitamins are grouped into two. You have the water-soluble vitamins and the fat-soluble vitamins. The water-soluble vitamins, the water-soluble vitamins, uh, as, as the name implies, are those vitamins that are those vitamins that dissolve in water in our body system? Example is vitamin B, vitamin C. We also have fat soluble vitamin. These are vitamins that are dissolved by fat. They can only dissolve in fat in our body system. Examples are vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, vitamin K. So these are the vitamins in our body system. Now, here we have the source of vitamins that function on deficiency. We have the egg, fish, vegetables. These are source of vitamin A. Function of vitamin A is to give proper vision of eye. That is the main function of vitamin A. Now, the deficiency of vitamin A, that is when you lack vitamin A, you have nice blindness. You find it difficult to see during the night. Another vitamin is vitamin B. It's not source and it make, make beams, cannot. These are sources of vitamin B. Its main function is the proper functioning of the heart. So when, when one lack vitamin B, such ends up having, this is like 
beriberi and paralysis. Vitamin C, strength of vitamin C, fresh fruits, green vegetables, scorbic acid, all of these are sources of vitamin C. What about the function of vitamin C? It aids wood healing and helps to resist infection. The deficiency is, vitamin, is scurvy. So when you lack vitamin C, you have scurvy. Vitamin D aids the hardening of bones. The hardening of bones. Sources of vitamin D, you can find it in fish, milk, egg, liver, etc. Now when you lack vitamin D, you add with disease like osteomalacia. Osteomalacia is a bone disease when your bone is not too strong. As the mineral osteomalacia. Now, what are the impacts of water? Now, we don't forget water is also part of the classes of food because water is life. Without water, we can't live. A man can live without water. A man can live without food for a week. But a man can never live without water for three days to know how important water is to our body system. So water is more important than the food we take in. Now, digestion, because of water involves digestion of food, maintenance of body and temperature, it serves as a medium of transportation for all nutrients. That is the main, it's main, it's main, this is our its main importance. Digestion of food, it helps to digest our food. There's no water, there's no how our food we digest. At the same time, it serves as medium of transportation for all nutrients. Now, we also have crawfishes. Now, crawfishes are just indigestible fibrous materials from fruits, vegetables, etc. But it's not our that crawfishes aid digestion. It aids digestion. And, can, and lack of it, lack of crawfishes in your body system. And sometimes some people have constipation, uh, my food is just my stomach is pain in me, uh, this and this, that. It's because we don't have refugees in the body system. Now let's quickly describe what balanced diet means. Balanced diet is a diet containing the correct proportion of all the food classes. Now when I say correct proportion, it's not say, not just say, okay, fine, let me make sure my food have the census classes. No, it must be in the Right proportion at this having a yes. food that have all the six classes of food, and yet maybe the beans is more so much, and the rice is just too little. Such food is not balanced. So, for a food to be balanced, all the six classes of food must be in the right proportion that is, that is at least 50% protein, 50% fat and oil, 10% vitamins, mineral, and water and 60% carbohydrate. So in a nutshell, our food should contain more carbohydrates than protein. So functions of balanced diet, it makes us healthy. It gives ability to, ability to resist diseases. It prevents malnutrition. It makes available energy needed to carry out all biological activities. So if our meal is balanced, if the diet of our meal is balanced, will be very healthy. History of having visiting, visiting the hospital regularly will reduce. So let's ensure to eat balanced diet. Now this is an example of a balanced diet food. Just to look at how important it is for us. And maybe we can make use of it for references. Now let's discuss our enzymes. Enzymes. Enzymes are organic catalysts that speed up the rate of reaction, of chemical reaction in our body system. Now, digestive enzymes aid the digestion of complex food substance into simple ones for it to be absorb absorbable by our body. Now, for enzymes, digestive enzymes, they work towards digestion, the breaking down of complex food substances into simple ones. Now, enzymes are the food characteristics. Enzymes are soluble, they are protein, they are specific in their actions, and enzymes are sensitive to temperature. 
that are very sensitive to temperature. That is, they work best between a certain range of temperature, maybe from 35 to 40. Enzyme is about reversible reactions. So the actions that involve enzymes are usually reversible. And they can go forward and go backward. Classes and functions of enzymes. Enzyme, the flowing are, are, are enzymes. We have the proteases, e.g. the pepsin, renin, trypsin, erypsin. All of these enzymes act on protein. But renin is a kind of enzyme that acts on, that acts on a liquid protein, liquid protein like milk, milk. So renin acts on milk. We have amylases, e.g. the italian lactase, maltase, sucrase, all of these act on carbohydrates. We also have lipase, which acts on lipids. So these are enzymes in our body system. Let's now talk about cellular respiration. Cellular respiration is defined as the oxidation of organic food substance in the cell particularly in the mitochondrion, to release energy in the form of ATP, adenosine triphosphate. So energy is released in our body in the form of adenosine triphosphate. There are two types of expiration, that are the aerobic and the anaerobic. Aerobic respiration is when cellular respiration takes place in the, in the presence of oxygen. Aero, aero means So in, in aerobic respiration, a large amount of energy is being released. Large amount of energy is being released. That is, the adenosine triphosphate released in aerobic respiration and in large amounts. You can see the reaction here. Glucose is acting with six molecules of oxygen to produce six molecules of carbon dioxide, six molecules of water, and ATP. We will have anaerobic respiration. For anaerobic respiration, it will be breaking down of glucose in the absence of oxygen, just the opposite of aerobic. So it occurs in some organisms such as bacteria, fungi, etc. And note for, aero for anaerobic, the amount of energy being released is little, just a little amount is being released. So we come to the end of today's class. Is there any question? No, sir. You, do you understand everything? You can ask questions in any aspect you deem fit. Hmm? All these enzymes here, you, you understand their types. Can you see the notes? Yes, I'm seeing it, and now it's my test book. Okay, good, good, good. So this aspect is just touching, as I'm just touching the, the topic little by little. It's not going deep. On that other digestion, on that other digestive system, enzyme will be treated properly. On that digestive system. So on that respiration also, aerobic and anaerobic respiration will be treated properly. So is there any, any question? No. Huh? No, sir. Okay, since there is no question, let me ask you a question. What is aerobic respiration? Um, okay. You said when cellular rep when cellular rep rep Sorry, because expiration. Expiration take place in the process. I I really can't see because your you max on I, I stuff. Don't know. I don't know why it's like Aerobic that. respiration takes place in the presence of oxygen. Oxygen. Okay. Simple. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So it takes place in the presence of oxygen, while an aerobic takes place in the presence of in the absence of oxygen. For example, now. Me and you, which kind of respiration do we do? Hmm? 
We breathe in oxygen. Aerobic. It's aerobic, aerobic. That's good, that's good. We, we breathe in oxygen. As we are breathing in oxygen, we are making use of oxygen for our respiration. So we human beings, we undergo aerobic respiration. So the next class, we will we'll talk better on that. Let's, let's call it a day. Have a wonderful night. Good night.